Hello and welcome to another Nitrix tutorial. Uh, this one's going to be on how to rip audio CDs to MP3s. For this I'm going to be using one of my all-time favorite programs. It's called FUBAR or FUBAR 2000. Um, you can download it from FUBAR2000.org. Click on download and then just go to the latest stable version. Uh, one of the reasons I love it so much is it's free and secondly you can download kind of like you download add-ons for Firefox and install those you can do the same thing for FUBAR so it's very very customizable. Uh, after we've downloaded FUBAR we have to get the lame codex because we're going to be ripping to mp3. We can get those from free-codex.com go on the left hand side to audio codex go to lame mp3 encoder click on the download lame mp3 encoder and then for 32-bit you want to click on the first link and for 64-bit operating system you want to click on the second link. Uh, this will download a zip file like so. Um, so I'll, w I'll just whisk you through the install process. Uh, double click the installer, run that, next and agree. Then you have two options here. A standard installation will install it just like any other program on your machine uh, and in the control panel uh, you can go to add and remove and uninstall it. The second option is a portable installation. This allows you to install FUBAR on a USB flash drive and it will save all of the settings that you have for it and you can take it wherever you want and you'll have it with you. Uh, this also means you can add your music to that USB flash drive and if you go to an internet cafe you always have your music with you and you know you have a great audio player that supports your music because uh, you took that with you as well. Next that, choose your install directory uh, and for components we want full and shortcuts I don't like desktop icons or start menu icons. Uh, so install that, should take under 20 seconds, there you go. Uh, you do not want to run it the first time you install it, or after the installation, sorry. <laughs> Finish that, and then we come to the late lame codex. For here, we only need lame.exe and lame underscore enc.dll. Extract those to your desktop, delete the file, and then you cut them, and go to your fubar install directory. When you're inside your install directory, you want to paste those two files inside it, close it up, and you're good so far. The first time you open up FUBAR, you'll be prompted to select the appearance, I guess. Uh, I'm just going to be keeping it simple and blue. I like blue. Okay, that. Um, and then you insert your audio CD. Go to FUBAR, there to File, Open Audio CD, and select the drive which contains your audio CD. Click on RIP. It will get some information from your CD, which in this case was not very much. It basically only tells us that there's 20 tracks on this CD. What you can do here is type in your, the title of the song and you can do that for each one. I tend to be a little bit more lazy than that so what I do is I use the information lookup which uses the freedb.org uh, database so we just click on lookup and this will retrieve all of the track information and album information and artist information that we need. Um, just click on update files if you messed up the name like I did here you also want to Clip wipe existing tags. Update file. And there we have it. It has all of the track information in there already for us. It has the album title, the, the genre, and the date. Uh, for artists like this one, uh, this album has various artists on it, so it correctly identified it has various artists. If you just have one artist, obviously it will add the artist name in there for you. I like to, under actions, before I start the ripping process, to verify with accurate rip and then I proceed where I can choose my output format, which is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to choose MP3 and we can see it's here got our lame codec. 
By default it's on 190 kilobytes per second, we can edit that for best quality which is 320 kilobytes per second and it will make it a constant bitrate. As you can see we can also choose FLAC if you want to, uh, you just have to download the um, codex for that. Click back. Destination folder you can basically just leave as default because as default it will ask you with each CD where you want it to get ripped to. Uh, processing, I won't go into processing. Here you can play around with some settings and everybody who rips music has their own preferences here. So you can play around with that. Um, if you do that you want to click on other. If you're not sure what you're doing, click on other. And this allows you to generate a preview of each song which you can choose in percentages or in seconds. So if you only want 10 seconds of your of the tracks, you go to fixed back track length and click on 10 seconds. And percentage you can choose, I want, if it's a five minute song, I want 10% and so on. Like that, after that you can save. So every time you rip a, um, CD, you can click on your preset and all you have to do then is convert. As we didn't select anything in the destination, we can choose our destination folder here and I correct. Created a temporary desktop folder called Music Rip. I just OK that and it will start the ripping process. Uh, I'll get back to you when that's done. OK, so the ripping has finished. Uh, we have a converter status report which is telling us everything is ripped just fine. And we have a output report showing us what's been ripped and the names of everything and so on. And in our folder we have all of our songs. Some of you might say, oh, but they aren't uh, in the correct order, there's no track numbers. Yes, there are. There we have them. Track numbers. One, and I know for a fact that this is the first song, that's the second song, and so on. So don't worry about the ordering, it'll be the same as the CD. Uh, thank you for watching, I hope this uh, helps some of you out, and it prevents your children from uh, scratching up your CDs so they're unplayable, because this way you can just uh, have a backup copy of them. Thanks for watching, uh, any suggestions for future tutorials are more than welcome, and as always, take care.